So today I want to talk about the proper tools and techniques that you're going to need when you're drilling holes in your home for running electrical wires. Now I know it probably sounds fairly easy to drill a hole. As long as you have a good drill, sharp bits, you can drill an easy hole. But when you're running electrical wires through them, there are some codes we want to follow. As an example why, if we drill too close, you can run into an issue like this. You don't want to damage the wires. So when it comes to drilling out holes in a new home or an addition when you have the wood studs, there are typically two types of drill bits that I'm going to use. One might be the auger bit. And this is going to go into a drill like this that's meant to drill a lot more holes. And the advantage of this is it has a self-feeding bit on the top, stays sharper longer, meant to hit a couple of nails, which you're probably going to run into in some of those studs, and just holds up and makes the holes much easier, lasts much longer. If I have to drill a hole for adding a receptacle or trying to fish a line in, I only need to drill one or two holes, I'm going to use a spade bit. The spade bit, this particular one does have a cell feed bit, some don't, it's up to you. Uh, it's meant for drilling a couple of clean holes in smaller, tighter locations, and I'm going to use this drill. Now, when it comes to making these holes, a straight bit isn't always going to be the right answer. Sometimes you have to work around a corner or a tighter space, and that's where some of our accessories come in. In those cases, we can use an assortment of extensions, a right angle adapter, even some oddball flexible bits that can help you get around some of the corners that you can't get to easily. And finally, in some of the tighter areas, if we have blocking in a wall that you can't see or some tighter areas to get into, we're going to use something like this. We have these long flexible drill bits that let us snake up walls that you normally wouldn't have access to without damaging the wall. All right, so let's go over one of the biggest rules that we have when it comes to drilling holes for wires, and that's the clearance from the edge of a stud. So for us, the code minimum is an inch and a quarter. We want to be an inch and a quarter away from any of these edges. So as an example, when we have a two by four like this, we want to be an inch and a quarter in here, and we have to be an inch and a quarter away from this edge. And as you can see, that's the spot we have to drill. Now, in theory, that should be exactly an inch, but the studs are slightly different, and I'm not good enough to drill exactly in the center every single time with a one inch bit. So the best practice is to step that bit size down. Maybe drop down to a three quarter inch bit that can go through those. That way you don't have to sit there and measure every single stud each time to find the exact center and get close enough with your eyeball. But when it comes to a two by six stud like this, we can still use that same bit, maybe go up to a one inch bit. And we know roughly where the middle is gonna be. We have plenty of clearance with this. It's easier to drill. So let's go ahead and show you if we use an auger bit. how we do this. Now for me, we know we have our inch and a quarter minimum clearance, but I also like to keep everything the same height. It makes it easier for a point of reference if you need to cut anything in, if someone's drilling something outside through a wall, you know where the wires roughly run. And the quickest and easiest way I've found for me, it's right about here on your leg. It's a good point to be at. It makes a good point to kind of guide this through if you're having a tough time or if it's older lumber and it's not as easy to drill. And it just gets you in about that right spot. So I'm just gonna put the glasses on. Let's go ahead and drill a couple holes. Now when we go to the corner, you can see that we can't quite square up the drill because the bay is not full sized. All right, so let's take a look at some of the options that we have. So for this drill, they do make larger bits and they do make extensions. We could use something like this or a different bit, but you can see even if we put this on with that smaller bit, we still may have a hard time getting into that spot. It's great for some applications, not for everything. So we have some other options. The next option what I tend to use in some of these corners, I'm gonna to go to this drill. I'm gonna use the spade bit that we spoke about earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the right angle adapter, put it into this, and this is how I'm going to fit into that bay comfortably when it's a little too tight. Now you can see that this angle fit in this bay pretty well, but that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes the stud's going to be a little further over and you're not going to have room for this to fit in. That's when the other accessories come into play. That's when we start using things like the extensions. You don't have to use them one at a time. You can stack them together. So a good little trick to do, if you have something in the way, is you can always put it through the existing hole ahead of time. That way you can square right up to that stud and drill it nice and cleanly. So for the final hole in this corner, we have plenty of room to fit a conventional drill and spade bit in there. 
Now that we have all of our holes drilled, it's time to go ahead and pull the wire. And this is where having them all the same height really helps us out. It makes it much easier to pull everything through. Nothing's getting twisted up, nothing's getting tangled. It's a much better job. So let's go ahead and take a piece. We're just gonna roll this out. And I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling it through this side. Nice clean holes, simple enough. And then we get to the corner and this is where it gets tricky sometimes. Now in this case, it's not too, too bad because we have a two by six on this side and a two by four on that side, giving us a fairly large bay. But let me show you how this actually works. Since we can't bend the wire inside here, we're gonna bend it by pushing it against this back wall. So when I go through this hole, here's what's gonna happen. I'm actually gonna push it all the way in. I'm gonna push it up against the back of the sheetrock and just gently wiggle it till I feel it starting to get a curve. And what's gonna happen, it's gonna get a curve like this and because it's wire, it's gonna hold its shape. So when it's inside that bay, has that curve, I pull it back and our holes are lined up. It makes it very easy to line up here. I can just slide my finger right here, touch the end of it with a little bit of pressure pushing forward and pulling back, I'll pull it right through that hole. So let me show you. I'm gonna straighten that back out. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here. Just push it forward a couple times to give it a little curve. And just like that, it comes right through. And as you can see, we pulled it all the way through very simply. Now, let's say you had a corner that was much tighter, a couple of two by fours, or the holes weren't perfectly lined up and you had an offset. There's another trick to get around that as well. So we have this sitting back here. We can't quite make the corner. I'll take a single piece of that wire about this big. And what I'll do is I'll put a little curve in it just to get it started. And I'm gonna use this like a fish. And I'm gonna start in here and just try and make that corner. And as you can see, that goes through a lot easier than an entire wire. You'd simply tape that on and pull that through and that would get you through. So these are some of the tips and techniques showing you how to drill holes through a framed wall to pull a single cable and how to deal with some of these corners you might run into. Now, if you're gonna be running multiple cables, you can increase the size of the hole to a certain point, but realize you are limited by certain factors, such as your clearance from the edge and how many cables you're gonna pull through there. You're only allowed to pull so many, so make sure you check with your local inspector to see what you are allowed to do. With that being said, and we're talking about some of the code issues, you may not always be able to get that clearance of an inch and a quarter from the edge that you want to get, and there is a solution for that. Worst case scenario, you can always throw up a nail plate to cover that space and keep that protected. Okay, and that'll solve that situation, and that'll keep us from having a stray nail or screw go through there and potentially hit that wire. And just remember, for making these jobs easier, it's always great to have the right tool and sharp drill bits to help you move along. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.